How's it going, everybody? So today we're going to be working on an A1932 MacBook Air that doesn't appear to be turning on. This is the newest MacBook Air. It is one of Paul's favorite, and we're going to see if we can make it work again. So let's turn on my overhead camera lights so that we can see what's going on on the desk over here, my beautiful, lovely, clean desk. This cover comes off a lot easier. No finger bending or cutting. Yes, I'm glad they got rid of that. All right, now as you can see, we have corrosion on the board. This is actually something that makes me happy. I'm never going to forget the one time that Paul opened this board that he got. It was an A1989, and he was looking at it and saying, oh, uh, please don't be disgusting, please don't be disgusting, please don't be disgusting. And then he sees that there's no corrosion whatsoever anywhere on the board. And what did you start saying? Please don't be clean. Please don't be clean. <laughs> why, why don't you want it to be clean? If it's clean, then God knows what's wrong with it. Yeah, if it's clean, there's no hints, which means dead T T2 chip. T2 chip getting mildly warm and that's it. So I'm actually quite happy that we have some hints here. So we're just going to take the board out of the machine and s get started, see what's, what it's doing. Is little mouse still around? No, he's gone. Three of his friends, however, made it in today. Two of them so, so they sealed their fate in the mouse traps, and one of them was just sitting in the garbage pail eating Hannah and Camille's Dorito crumbs, which are not going to be in the garbage anymore after we leave. Given the fact that I thought there was one mouse, but there's actually about four mice, it is about time to take out the big guns and bring in the Oreo. All right, so it looks like we have two issues here. The first is corrosion on the charge port, which we're just going to scrape away here. And the next is we have some corrosion over here on what I imagine are PP Bus G3 hot caps right next to the speaker output, but let's just see if that is the case. I'm going to open up a board here for the A board view for the A1932. This board is an A20-01521, and those two caps that have a lot of corrosion on them are indeed PP Bush G3 hot, so proper guess. So my guess is that I likely had a short that was being caused by that arcing corrosion, and that since I removed it with my Q-tip, Right now it's good, but let's just see if that's the case. I'm going to turn on the Paul Daniels software, get the meter on the screen. Okay, so we have 5 ohms short to ground on PP Bush G3 Hot. So 5 ohms to ground on the main power line for the bat that charges the battery and is also responsible for the entire machine is no good. So I'm going to take my soldering iron over here. Yeah, this is one of those short circuits where I don't need to use a thermal camera because it's really obvious what it is that's causing it. Kevin, I, I'm gonna block for you. Give me the. Wait, this is not. Is this? Clickety clackety is back. Yes, yes. Clickety clackety. See this keyboard on my this this genuine this fucks up my whole desk. I can't I can't bring this over. I can't bring the board back. I can't do anything because of it. But this keyboard, Mr. Clickety clackety. I missed you, little clickety clackety. I don't know why I ever got rid of you. You're my favorite keyboard. And now there's three mouse mice in the store today. So the mouse that we found was not it. There's more. Now let's get rid of that nasty solder blob that I probably just could have flicked off, but now I'm stupidly wicking. Watch Gutwick erase my mistake as if it never happened. That little cap that slid out of place before is going to come back into place nicely. Yeah, honestly, I could have made this entire job much easier by simply using hot air from the beginning. I was just trying to minimize the hot air that I put on this board because the, this board is smaller than the other boards. There's a lot more you know, BGA stuff, SS, uh, underfilled SSDs, underfilled RAM, and, and there's also the connector right next door. So the less heat that I use on this thing, the better. But as you saw, that unfortunately, that's not always possible.
Who does the procurement of donor boards? I do. Do you plan on offering Dastu a job after he graduates? When Dastu graduates, he's going to become some sort of designer or something. He's not going to want to work here fixing boards with the common folk. Dastu's going to be what they... Oh, Dastu's going to be the uh, bourgeoisie. He's going to become an engineer at Apple, probably. Yeah, that's what I see Dastu doing. Making those programmable chips that die if you... That's... Dastu's going to make those programmable chips that if you try to read the firmware off of them, it just kills itself. Let's see, Das dude knows his shit, so when he testifies against right to repair, I'm gonna have to come up with much better ammo. <laughs> oh, I'm kidding. Now I'm gonna do something I shouldn't do again, which is be a perfectionist. I wanna have, it's not good enough that it's soldered on the board, I want it to be prettily soldered on the board. Can't leave well enough alone. Yep, and you see what happens when I do that. That really wants the short. You know what's really lame is those two pads that are next to each other. I thought since these are both PP bus caps, that that would be PP bus G3 hot at the, at the point that keeps wanting to touch, but it's not. That's actually ground on one end and PP bus on the other. That's really shitty. Okay. He said he's not sure what he will be doing, so working for the man may not be in his plans. We'll see. Yeah, if Das dude wanted to work here, I'd be honored. But again, he lives in a, a civilized part of the United States, not you know where where housing is affordable and. People are nice, and the streets aren't polluted, and people are honest. And yeah, like, why would you want to leave that to come to this shithole? You know? Like, it's funny when people say, I would love to come to New York to work. You have no idea. It's like, even if you only pay me, like, even if I I'll get the same money I get at my current job, it's still, you don't understand. If you get paid the same money that you get paid in your current job to be in New York City, you're, you're poor. If you're in Texas or Mississippi, or Kansas, or South Dakota, or Virginia, and you think you're making a decent living, and you're like, I don't even mind if I don't get a raise, I want to come work for Lewis. If you work for Lewis at the salary you're getting, wherever you are right now, you're probably going to be poor. I'm so confident in myself, I'm not even going to check if the short's gone before I plug it in. Famous last words. I'm sure it'll work just fine. If this doesn't get fan spin, then I'll be pretty, pretty surprised. So what do you all think? You think I'm going to get some fan spin? Paul. Paul. Oh, Paul. He doesn't know MacBooks. It's okay. Paul thinks there's no fan on an A 1932. Just because the fan is not coupled to the heat sink does not mean that there's no fan. Just, be Just because the fan serves no purpose does it mean... <laughs> Alright, let's see what we get. So it looks like 5 volts, 100 milliamps, 20 volts, 70 milliamps, open sesame mofo. Alright, come on. Are you booting? We have an Apple logo. I didn't plug in the fan, so we don't have the fan spinning. But as you can see, this MacBook does work again. So it looks like it was had a bunch of corrosion right by the speaker connector. It's a very common area for corrosion to get on the A1932. And there were two capacitors that had corrosion on them for PP Bush G3 hot. I measured the resistance to ground on PP Bush G3 hot, and it was around 0 to 4 ohms. That is not proper. So I went to remove them. Now, at first, I tried to remove them 
properly by using the iron because you, you have to understand the reason I did that is because there are chips, some nice BGA chips over here. I forget if this is the RAM or the SSD. Yeah, that, that's the SSD because it says SanDisk on it. So right next to those caps is underfilled underfilled SSD. So you have to understand, even if you think it's stupid that I went ahead and tried to remove those caps using the soldering iron instead of using hot air, that there's a good reason for it. I was trying to preserve the customer's data. Obviously, I, I was able to preserve it with the hot air because it booted up and you could see that it you know, showed their name and everything. But you always want to take precautions whenever you're using hot air right around underfilled NAND or anything like that because that, that's going to be a complete and utter nightmare to work on. And it's always important to try and lower your risk. And perhaps I'll find that that area of the board is very heavily heat sinked. You may have noticed that even when every time I would tin the pads, it would immediately would dry almost immediately. That's why it was drying in a very kind of unclean, gravelly state that it usually dries in when the solder does not have enough flux or I haven't done it properly. But we, I wanted to manage using the hot air to do that. The short is obviously gone since it's booting, and that's it. I have an easy A1932 no power. And I don't know what Paul's complaining about when it comes to these new machines, because it seems like they're just all easy, breezy, beautiful cover girl. Just remember, it's not lying. It's commercial real estate. Again, I'm, I usually don't chill mugs, T-shirts, all that kind of stuff, but I would like a straight floor. And that's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. See you in the next video.